you, um, I think, saw that maybe those Ivy League institutions maybe weren't producing the best and brightest or weren't exactly um, hitting their mandate, um, and you created the Teal Fellows. And you've been doing that for a while, and I meet them all because they all have crazy ideas and they pitch me for angel investment. What have you learned getting people to quit school, giving them $100,000, and then how many parents call you and get really upset that their kids are quitting school? Uh, it's, well, I don't know. I've, 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 I've learned a lot. I mean, it's, it's um, I don't know. I, 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 think, I think the universities are far worse than I even thought when I started this thing. Um, <laughs> I think, um, yeah, it's, um, you know, I, I, I did this, uh, I did this debate at uh, Yale uh, last week, um, you know, resolved the higher education's a bubble and, um, and, uh, you sort of go through all the different numbers and, um, the, and then, you know, and again, I, I was careful to word it in such a way that I, I didn't have to, you know, and then people kept saying, well, what's your alternative? What should people do instead? And I said, nope, that's not, was not the debate. I'm not, you know, I'm not your guidance counselor. I'm not your career counselor. I, I don't know how to solve your problems. But um, if something's a bubble, you know, the first thing you should do is probably not, you know, lean into it in too crazy a way. And, you know, the student debt was 300 billion in 2000. It's, uh, it's basically uh, close to 2 trillion at this point. So it's just been this sort of runaway, um, this runaway process. And, um, and then if you look at it by cohort, if you graduated from college in 1997, 12 years later, um, people still had student debt, but most of the people had sort of paid it down. Um, but the first, by 2009, we started the Teal Fellowship in 2010, and it, you know, it felt, uh, two, by 2009 was the first cohort where this really stopped. If you take the people who graduated from college in 2009 and you fast forward 12 years to 2021, the median person had more student debt 12 years later than they graduated with. Because I, I, it's actually just, it's just compounding faster. And it was you know, partially, partially the global financial crisis, the people had less well-paying jobs, they stayed in college longer, um, and the colleges, but they, it's just sort of been this background thing where it's, it's decayed in these, in these really significant ways. And um, you know, again, I, th I think it's on some level, um, there are sort of a lot of um, debates in our society that are probably dominated by sort of a boomer narrative. And maybe the baby boomers were the last generation where college really worked. And you know, they think, well, you know, I, I worked my way through college and why can't, why can't, um, why can't you know an 18-year-old going to college do that today? And um, and so I th I, th I think the bubble will 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 be done once the boomers have exited stage left. But does the government um, need it'd to be, stop? It would be good if we figured something out before then. You know, does, does the government need to stop underwriting the loans? Because it's the lending. I think the, the 90 plus percent of the, the the capital in the student loan programs is funded by federal uh, federal the federal government. And there's, if you're an accredited university, you can take out a loan and go to it. And accreditation, in a, in, a, in, a, in a rigid kind of free market system, you would have an underwriter that says, are you going to be able to graduate, make enough money to pay your loan off? Is this a good school? Is, are you going to get a good job? And then the market would figure out whether or not to give you a loan, would figure out what the rate should be, and so on. But in this case, the government simply provides capital to support all of this. And as a result, everything's gotten more expensive. And the rigidity in the system that basically qualifies schools and the quality of those schools relative to the earning potential over time is gone. Sure. So we need the government to get look, out look, of look, like, the student look, loan business. <laughs> yeah, but look, the place, the place where I'm, yeah, I, I don't know, the, the, I'm sort of, some ways I'm right wing, some ways I'm left wing on this. So the, the place where I'm left wing is, I do think a lot of the students got ripped off. And, uh, and so I think there should be some kind of broad um, relief debt forgiveness wow. at this point. Um, Who should pick it, up the tab? But it's not just the taxpayers. It's the universities, and it's the the the, the bondholders. Got it. The bond so take a little bit out of those and, endowments. And, and the universities, and um, and then obviously, if you just make it the taxpayers, then um, then you'll just then the universities can just charge more and more. There's, every no, year incentive and there's no, that no incentive to reform what, whatsoever. But you've uh, had um, well, but, also, um, I mean, if but, you know, it's in 2005. Uh, it was under Bush 43 that the bankruptcy laws got rewritten in the U.S where you cannot discharge student debt even if you go bankrupt. And if you haven't paid it off by the time you're 65, your social security wage checks will be garnished. 
It's crazy. So, um, so you know, I, I, I do think... Um, but should we stop lending? Should the federal government get out of the, the student lending business? Well, if, 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 we, if we say that... Uh, if, we, if, we start, if we start with my place where, you know, a lot of the student debt should be forgiven, and then... And then, and then reform the whole program. And then we'll see yeah. how many people are willing to lend. You know, how, how, much, how many of the colleges can uh, pay for all the students? What's your, what's, have... what's your sense? If, if it was a totally free market system, how many colleges would shut down? Because they wouldn't be able to... So, there's no tuition support. It, it probably would be a lot smaller. It, it, it might, it might, it, you might not have to shut them down because there's, you know, a lot of them have gotten extremely... A bloat. It's like Baumol's cost disease, where you know, I don't know. If you, I, I have no idea. Like a, a place like UCLA, it probably has, you know, twice or three times as many bureaucrats as they had 30, 40 years ago. So there's sort of all there's sort of all these sort of um, parasitic people that have sort of uh, <laughs> gradually accrued, and uh, and, um, and and so there's probably a lot of there would be a lot of rational ways to dial this back, but. Um, but yeah, um, you know, maybe we're going to need a new location for next year. If the only way to lose weight is to cut off your thumb, that's kind of a difficult way to go on a hey, diet. Um, Peter, three of your collaborators, longtime collaborators, uh, Elon Musk, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, and uh, Sam Altman are arguably the three leading AI language model um, leaders. Which one is going to win? Rank them in order and tell us a little bit about each. <laughs> <laughs> Peter said he would answer any question. I, I, I said I would take any question. I didn't say to answer any question. You said you, said you would honestly. You said today you felt extremely honest and candid. So let's. Uh, I, I uh, yeah, but I've already been extremely honest and candid. So I think I'm going to stop here. Quote it's, it, 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 it's, it's it's whoever I talk to last. Okay. Uh, well, but, okay. Why don't you... they're, all, they're all very very convincing people. So you know I. Great answer. I don't know. I, well, maybe you talk know, I, a little I, bit about I, each I, individual. I, I, I talked to Elon a while ago, and and you know, and it was it was just um, how ridiculous it was that Sam Altman was getting away with turning OpenAI from a nonprofit into a for-profit. That was such a scam. If everybody was allowed to do this, everybody would do this. Uh, that it has to be totally illegal what Sam's doing, and it shouldn't be allowed at all. And that seemed really, really convincing in the moment. And then sort of half an hour later, I, I thought to myself, but you know, actually, um, man, it was, it's been such a horrifically mismanaged place at OpenAI with this preposterous nonprofit board they had. Nobody would do this again. And so there actually isn't much of a moral hazard from it. So, but yeah, whoever, whoever I talk to, I, I find very convincing in the moment. <laughs>